We're introducing here a brand new way of measuring angles, but sort of like the last lesson, there's no new math in, in this lesson. It's just a new way of measuring the things we're already working with. You may not be entirely convinced by that because I have a couple of circles in your notes and we've not been talking about circles. We've been working with triangles, right? But you will find, I had a teacher tell me this uh, towards the end of my high school career, trig is more about circles than it is about triangles and you'll come to understand that more and more as we go on through the next couple of lessons. So we're going to use these circles to investigate the differences between our two units of measure. So we've been working in degrees, right? And that's something that you're familiar with. Um, you talk about degrees sometimes in real life too, um, particularly if you're like doing carpentry or something like that, you might use degrees. But we are introducing radians, which is just another unit of measure. It's sort of like how when you talk about things in real life, you often talk about feet, right? But when you take science, particularly in something like physics, you use metric, you use meters, stuff like that. Same type of thing. So the units of measure we're learning here are the more sort of serious academic units of measure that we use to talk about angles. And you'll use these almost exclusively from this point on in your math career. I want to talk a little bit about what a degree is so we can understand the difference between our two units. Um, the reason that trigonometry is so well developed and we talk so much about degrees is it was really important for like navigating ships. So imagine you're on like your pirate ship here and you have to point your ship in a very particular direction, right? You can't see anything, you're in the middle of the ocean. So it's really important that you, you have your bearing exactly right. And that's what we're gonna think about as we look at this circle, right? So imagine like our ship is in the center of the circle and we have to point it to a particular spot on the outside of the circle. The way that they did that, right, is by dividing the circle up into 360 equal parts. So you know that degrees, there's 360 degrees in a circle, particularly if you're like a skateboarder or something, right? Um, so it makes sense that those units, there's so many of them in a circle because we have to be super precise to get our boat where we want it to go, right? Well, let's consider just half of the circle, right? So... Imagine if we went all the way around, and I'm not going to make all of the marks, but in degrees, there'd be 180 degrees in half the circle, right? And we're just going to consider 180 because it's, it's a little bit easier to manage, right? Say in a semicircle. Okay, so this is going to be, again, this is for degrees. And then radians, we're going to measure that same half of a circle, but notice radian really it sounds like same root word as radius right radius you remember is the distance from the center of the circle to the outside so that's a radius so that's actually where this unit comes from and it actually makes a whole lot of sense we're going to measure the circle in terms of the circle itself so rather than dividing it up into like kind of randomly 360 parts we're going to consider how many times can this radius wrap around the outside of the circle and if you look very carefully, so it'd be like one, two, and just a little bit less than three if you draw it carefully. And I didn't draw it super precisely, but it comes out to be a little bit less than three, or a little bit more than three radians around the outside of the circle. So right now, I'm gonna say about three radians. And if you measure this super precisely, cut the, the half the circle into three pieces and then measure that little piece that's left over in terms of the radius, you'd find that little leftover piece was well, about 0.14 radians. And that number should look awfully familiar, right? This is the kind of like discoveries that, that feel exciting to me. So it turns out that there's pi radians in a semicircle. So if I took that radius and laid it along the outside of the circle, it would take three and a little bit more of them to get around. Okay, so that leads us to like our conversion factor, right? So that there, there's 12 inches in a foot, while well, there's 180 degrees in pi radians. Those are equivalent. They mean the same thing. They represent half of a circle. Sometimes you see 360, 
in 2pi. You can use that as well, whichever you prefer, but 180 degrees in pi radians is easier to use. So that's basically the whole lesson. We've introduced our whole unit, and then everything else is the same. So our special angles in radians, well, if we want to know 30 degrees is how many radians, well, I could be like 30 over 360. Um, so that's pretty much it. That's the whole lesson. Everything else we already know. So if I want to know 30 degrees is how many radians, well, I could be like 30, you definitely know how to do this, over 180 equals x over pi. And then I can cross multiply and solve, right? So I'll get 30 pi equals 180 x. And then remember I'm solving for x, so I'll get x is equal to 30 pi over 180 radians. So I just set up a unit conversion with like part whole, part whole, part whole, part whole. And then this simplifies to pi over 6 radians. Pi over 4 radians? Well, let's see. We could set it up the same way or we could just use the handy trick that pi radians becomes 180 degrees. So pi over 4 is the same as 180 over 4 degrees, which is 45 degrees. So these are our special angles, right? 45 degrees, and then our last one, 60 degrees. Well, 60 degrees is twice 30 degrees, so twice pi over 6 is pi over 3. So you'll do a little bit of conversion in your practice. And then the last thing, and you'll do this on your own because you already know how to do this, is a reference for our special angles. So we're, our special angles now, instead of 30, 45, and 60, are going to be pi over 6, pi over 4, and pi over 3 radians. And they're ugly written this way. It's less easy to think about pi over 4 than it is 45 degrees, but the results are the same. So you can fill this out using your previous notes section. For example, we know from our special triangles that sine of pi over 4, sine of 45 degrees, means the same thing, is 1 over square root 2, or root 2 over 2 when you rationalize. So fill this out using either by drawing the triangles or using your previous notes, and then you're ready to jump into the practice. The only thing we're changing here is the units.